Hello and welcome to Pickleball Therapy, the podcast dedicated to your pickleball improvement. Hope you're having a great week. This week we're going to talk about a couple of interesting subjects, I think anyway. One, we're going to talk about a red herring, something that players do more often than they should. And we're going to explain to you, hopefully, why that is something you don't want to add to your game. And if you have it in your game, maybe a reason to take it out. Then in the riff today, we are going to talk about recreational versus competitive play. Nothing against recreational play, but we're going to talk about how recreational play, you can improve there, but then maybe how you need to add some competitive play into your game if you really want to improve as a pickleball player. Stay tuned for the podcast. Paddle from a company that you may have never heard of called Diadem Sports. Diadem is new to pickleball, but not to racket sports. It's a long-standing company located in South Florida, and they spent the last two years designing this paddle, and it shows. The Icon offers the best playability, by which I mean combination of power, control, weight, and feel, of any paddle that Jill and I have played with or tested, and we've tested a bunch. If you're looking for a paddle with unsurpassed playability, check out the Icon paddle at diadempickleball.com. I'll link to that below in the show notes. You can use code VIPICKLE10 at the site for 10% off the paddle. If you want to read more about the Icon Paddle, I'll also link down below to our full paddle review in the show notes. If you try out the paddle, send me an email and let us know how the paddle impacted your game. Good luck out there. If you've listened to Into Pickle, VI Pickleball, Better Pickleball, any of us, uh, what you know that we talk about a lot is our red herrings or uh, squirrel, shiny object, things like that. Things that can distract us from our paths of improvement and can detract us from our game. I was sort of laughing about that because I I uh, was thinking about detract and distract and anyway. So it'll distract you from the game like detract is distracting me right now. But uh, you know what we want to do when we're, when we're playing pickleball or we're trying to improve as a pickleball player. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we sort of keep our eye on the ball to use that phrase. We want to make sure that we uh, stay focused on what we're trying to accomplish. And what happens is these these red herrings or these side paths that we end up going down um, will detract or detract from what we're trying to accomplish and distract us from where we're trying to go. And they can actually, uh, they, they can, they, they, they cost us, right? Because we're spending time on things that, that are not going to be as productive as other things. And sometimes they can actually be downright detrimental to our game. They can introduce errors, introduce uh, things into our game or, or, or ways of playing in our game that can actually, uh, hamper us more than they help us in other words not even just be neutral some things are neutral sometimes you know we'll spend time on something that okay it's not gonna uh, help us too much but it's not gonna hurt us either there are some things however that can actually not just um, you know hamper our progress moving forward but also uh, hamper our performance around the court an example that I want to talk about today is the windshield wiper motion of a paddle and so what happens is uh, there's players who who hit Instead of hitting, instead of hitting through the ball, so instead of, of the paddle hitting the ball and then going through it towards the direction of their target, what they do is as they make contact with the ball, they they bring the paddle up and over it, kind of like a, like they're brushing it or combing the top of the ball. Think of it like a windshield wiper. So they're bringing the the paddle up to hit the ball and then they're bringing it up and over like a windshield wiper. That stroke mechanic is a stroke mechanic that can create significant difficulties in your shots. And it can result in many more errors than you otherwise would have if you did not have a windshield wiper type of stroke. If you've ever played tennis or if you've watched tennis uh, matches, watched tennis players with any kind of studying their stroke at all, you'll notice that tennis players do use, a lot of times use that windshield wiper type of stroke where they basically make contact with the ball and then the, the racket will immediately start coming up and over, again, like a windshield wiper. The difference is in tennis, you have a, or in tennis, you have a tennis racket, right, which has strings on it, and you have a ball that has fur on it or felt on it. So what happens is as the, as the racket engages the ball, as the strings more accurately engage the ball, they're able to grab onto that ball. And then as you pull up with the, with the racket, as it moves forward and you're pulling up, that can impart a tremendous amount of spin onto the ball. Uh, topspin in this case as you're coming up on the ball with the windshield wiper motion and so what happens there is is the physics of the game the the equipment that's being used and the way it interacts with each other allows for that type of shot to be effective in pickleball on the other hand we play with a mostly flat paddle i mean there are they have a little bit of texture sometimes but they're mostly flat and we play with a rigid ball a hard ball with no felt or or surface material on it and so what happens is our 
the interaction between our paddle and our ball and pickleball don't allow or don't support that same kind of uh, stroke m mechanic that you can have in, a t in, in, as in tennis as an example because when you go when you make contact with the ball and immediately start lifting that paddle up in that windshield wiper motion you're basically losing the, you're losing the type of contact that is going to impart a significant um, make a significant difference on the ball and the way it, it flies because you, instead of instead of swinging forward which you should be doing or, or hitting through that ball what you're doing is you're taking the energy and lifting up on it and what you will impart some spin to the ball but what will end up happening invariably over time is you will end up missing a lot of shots uh, because of that mechanic of lifting the paddle as opposed to driving that ball that paddle through the ball towards your intended target our 2021 VI Pickleball camps held by CJ Johnson and myself in Lake Tahoe, Nevada this September are currently sold out. You can get on the waiting list for those, but we will be holding our 2022 camps in January in lovely Tampa, Florida. It'll be a great time of year to come to Tampa. If you're interested in receiving information about the camps, send us an email at camps at wearepickleball.com. Again, camps with a plural at wearepickleball.com, and we'll make sure you get that information. To complete the thought, it also it can also happen the other way. So the windshield wiper is the easier one to, to visualize because you're you're making contact and then coming up and over it. Um, the other way is if you make contact with the ball and then come under it. So like you're trying to really cut that ball. Those shots can be uh, those shots are basically prone to error. You might hit a couple of them, uh, and then what will happen is the third one you'll mistime it. Right? Yeah, just a, a timing issue. And what will happen is. Uh, if you mistime it a little bit on those kind of shots where you're coming either uh, significantly under the ball with a cut or significantly over the ball with a windshield wiper topspin, what will happen is you'll end up uh, not imparting enough energy into the ball or you'll end up sending the ball in a direction that you don't intend, uh, particularly on the, on the windshield wiper, which you'll end up doing is lifting that ball up a lot of times and basically floating it into the attack zone of your opponents, resulting in a smash. So what we suggest is rather than trying to uh, impart a significant amount of spin either uh, on the top of the ball or on the bottom of the ball with those types of shots is that you focus on on a more forward trajectory on your motion on your uh, stroke mechanics so that you avoid some of the, um, the the additional errors that can come from windshield wiper type of mechanics in your strokes if you want to know more about this type of um, an error in your game and and other similar types of errors consider joining us at uh, vi pickleball uh, we have, uh, uh, we're launching our, our membership, uh, we're opening our membership, I should say, and launching a, a success path approach to uh, pickleball, which will really help you get from uh, wherever you are on the path. But if you're on point B, you'll get to point C. If you're on point C, you go to point D, etc. Wherever you are, you'll go to the next point along the path. Uh, really specific uh, exercises and concepts for you to get from where you're at to where you want to go next, and then hopefully keep on going as far as you want to go in this uh, you know, we use the phrase, uh, uh, you know, we want to help you become the best pickleball player you can be. Uh, there's a sort of a, a, a rider onto that, if you will, which is we want you to become the best pickleball player you can and want to be. It's important to us that, uh, you know, that we uh, act as basically a support to you, as, a, as, a, as an aid to you. And what we want to do is help you get to where you want to go. And uh, so if you're into that kind of stuff and you want to understand more about these types of errors and how they increase in your game, definitely check us out at VI Pickleball. You can find out more at wearepickleball.com. I'll link to it in the notes. The bottom line is as you progress through the game, as you try and improve as a pickleball player, keep your eye, you know, down the down the road that you're trying to that you're trying to walk uh, and avoid those red herrings or side paths that'll creep up from time to time, those flashing lights that'll that'll appear on the right and on the left of your path. And try and stay on the path that you're on. Try and focus on the items that'll give you or the, the uh, skills and the, and the strategies and concepts that'll give you the, the biggest bang for your buck and will help you make the most improvement in your game. If you want to listen to what I have to say about recreational versus competitive play and how both impact your game, stay tuned for the riff. You'd like to help your friend or family member learn how to play pickleball, but how? Now it's easy. Pick up a copy of Play Pickleball, A Beginner's Guide. It's the most complete guide to playing pickleball. Available as a digital download or in hard copy at intopickle.com or at Amazon. Let's keep growing the sport. If you listen to this podcast, the odds are good that you are a pickleball player who wants to improve in your game. You want to improve, you want to learn more, you want to just expand your knowledge about pickleball. 
Uh, usually we don't find, we don't get, uh, uh, you know, uh, people who listen to this podcast, particularly not whatever we're into this, you know, eight or 10 minutes into this podcast, uh, just, uh, uh, you know, casually. So chances are you want to improve. And there's, what I wanted to talk about is there's really two different types of games outside of tournaments. There's really two types of games that we engage in as pickleball players. One is a traditional rec play, open kind of rec play. And then the other is a more competitive focus type of a game. So I want to be clear. I mean, there's nothing wrong with rec play. Rec play is, is an awesome part of our sport. I think open play is one of the features of our sport that makes it so welcoming to new players and to folks that, you know, just want to go out there, get some exercise, you know, move around a little bit, say hi to friends, things like that. That's awesome. That's amazing. Keep on doing that. Um, but what I want to talk about is if you're trying to improve as a pickleball player, Again, I'm not trying to tell you don't do recreational, don't go to recreational play. I'm, I definitely keep on doing it, get the social in, and uh, and enjoy that part of the game. But there are some limitations when you play recreational play in terms of your ability to, to really make significant strides as a pickleball player in improving. And the, the biggest problem with recreational play is the usually what you see is that great disparity in levels in the in the overall you know the folks playing in the in the rec play there'll be big disparity but even on one particular court on the court you're on so what'll happen is say that you know you're, you're say you're a you know a 3.75 you're a you're almost a 4 you're you're a very competent player you're getting you know you're, you have a few pieces left but you're you're getting there and your partner is a brand new beginner a 2.0 player and you're playing against two 3.0 players well what happens in that situation invariably is uh, you may get a few balls uh, you know, especially at the beginning of the match, uh, the game. But once the game gets tight, um, usually human nature takes over and you don't see another ball. So it's very difficult to get a good sense of a flow of a game, of a kind of a more normal uh, flow of a pickleball or playing pickleball when you're playing in circumstances where um, there's not a, a more evenly matched uh, players on the court. Same thing can happen when your opponent is, uh, you know, you're playing against a 2.0 player, let's say, as as a, a high three seven, you know, three eight player. Uh, what can happen is you you basically have a situation where you have a player who cannot respond to the shots that you would uh, normally want to hit. So it modifies your play, and then you can't really explore the full extent of of what you what you need to work on in order to keep on improving. The other thing is also true about the types of shots you're receiving. Uh, you know, if you're playing players that aren't quite at your level or, or a little above you, you're not seeing the types of shots that you're going to see when you start playing. Or let's say you go to a tournament and start playing, you know, play a, a, a solid 3-5 field or even a 4-0 field. Uh, you know, you're going to get balls that you're going to be like, I've never seen this kind of shot before. I don't know what to do with it. So what I would suggest to you is, again, don't, don't, don't completely abandon rec play. Uh, keep doing the rec play, enjoy it, and uh, and appreciate what it's what it's there for and what it can give to you. But try and add some competitive matches if you can to your uh, to your weekly routine, and that can be you know that can be bookending rec play with that. So you know let's say you have a rec play situation that kind of dies down at a certain point, you could uh, see if, if some of the players at your level want to play one or two games at the end there just to kind of hone your skills. That's I think that's an amazing way of doing it. Another way of doing it is obviously scheduling separate times to play with folks closer to your level uh, so that you can really get challenged and really improve as a pickleball player. So um, continue the rec, but consider adding some more competitive play if you uh, haven't done so already. One other th thought on the competitive play is, uh, you know, there's ladder leagues in your area or team leagues in your area, things like that. Those are good ways to get competitive play short of going to a tournament. So uh, that's uh, my suggestion to you if you want to keep on your path to improvement. Hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. As always, a pleasure making it for you. If uh, you enjoyed the podcast, please give it a rating and share it with your friends. Remember, if you enjoyed the podcast, they probably will too. We'll see you next week and be well out there.